When the newly elected Congress arrives in January, they may find an increasingly toxic mood in the nation's capital. Democratic control of the House could mean a flurry of indictments and investigation that stifle any spirit of bipartisanship. Yesterday, I sat down with newly elected 2nd District Congresswoman Elaine Luria. I asked the Navy veteran about the choppy seas ahead and her promise to work for the greater good of her country and the district. It's a story you'll see only on 13 News Now. If President Trump's tone the day after Democrats took control of the House is it's any indication... You, that's enough. Put down the mic. The Mr. rancor President. in Washington is about to be ratcheted up. They can look at us, and then we can look at them. The new Congress could turn into a race to the bottom. Somebody has to try. There's a lot of chaos in Washington. Fresh off her victory, Elaine Luria told me she's determined to be that person, keeping her promise to her constituents. And I think that, you know, going in with an open mind to listen to both sides, but, you know, really... Um, trying to come together than be so polarized because there's so many issues that we can work on that that don't require polarization. While there could be a flurry of indictments and investigations when Luria arrives in Washington, she insists her focus will remain on reaching across the aisle and toward opportunities for progress on infrastructure and sea level rise, two issues critical to her district. I think infrastructure is definitely a starting point and we know that that's very important to this region. We need to go to Washington and, and look at sea level rise for what it is for the region. It's a national security issue. It's a jobs and livelihood issue in the area. You know, the military is 42 percent of our, our local economy. Luria told me in Chris crossing the district during her campaign never did she find anyone wanting to see offshore drilling in the area. And she's promising to work with others to push back on any of those efforts. I look at legislation as a, as a reflection of our values, and I don't think that we should do things to further incentivize exploration for fossil fuels. We should use those tools to incentivize greener, cleaner energy sources that are, that are better for our environment. Luria, a former Navy commander who served on six different ships, acknowledges there's been progress on military readiness and sees herself as a fit for the House Armed Services Committee. My personal background of having served for 20 years and understanding um, the military deployment cycle, the national security priorities, and, and all of those aspects, I think it is very important to have a voice for this region on the Armed Services Committee. As she gets ready to head to Washington, Luria says the mood there must change. Her message to the president would be tough talk in the form of tweets is dangerous. I think that that's a dangerous way to lead and a dangerous way for us to interface with our allies around the world. That leaves our allies very uncertain, whether that be South Korea and Japan and the Western Pacific or whether that be our, our NATO allies. I asked Lori if the Ashanti alert bill Congressman Taylor championed at the federal level were not passed in this session and had to be refiled in the House, would she pick it up? She told me she feels this is important legislation, that she would do what she can to work for its passage.